starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The night before Christmas and at Jack Benny's house, there are presents for all, even cheese for the mouse. Jack is up on a chair, then he's down on his knee, but you have to do that when you're trimming a tree. Well, we're all through, Mary. Gee, it was nice of you to come over and help me trim the tree. Well, if I didn't, you'd never get it done. Say, Jack, shall I put the snow around the bottom now? Not yet. I want to see if the lights are working. I'll hold up the bulb, and then when I say ready, you plug it in. Okay. Ready? Ready. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! <laughs> My goodness. Jack, why did you make me shut it off? Those lights were so pretty, especially those two blue ones that kept flashing on and off. Those were my eyes. <laughs> I must have been holding on to a bare wire. Well, it's your own fault. Every time you fool around with electricity, something goes wrong. It does now. I know plenty about electricity. Oh, sure. Remember what happened two years ago when you fixed your doorbell? What happened? I pushed the button and it burned down Crosby's house. <laughs> Stop exaggerating. Anyway, hand me that roll of tape. Give me that tape. I'll fix this bare wire right now. Here you are. Thanks. Comes to electricity. I know what I'm doing. See, when you see a bare wire, you just tape it up like, like this. And that way it's insulated against outside elements. There, that ought to be enough tape. All right, Mary, plug it in. Okay. Pull it out! Pull it out! For heaven's sake. <laughs> what happened, Jack? I taped my finger to the wire. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, gee. And that time it is even prettier than before. What do you mean? Your nose lit up, too. <laughs> it did not. Let's get this tree finished before the gang gets here. But, Jack, what about the light? We'll have to let that go until later. Now, hand me one of those... Oh, lights. Mr. Benny! What is it, Rochester? I baked that cake like you told me to. Good. Did you have enough whipped cream to spell out Merry Christmas on top? Yeah. Say, boss, how many R's in Merry? Two. Oh. So you better add one. Add one? I better cross one out. I got three. <laughs> well, leave it. It's better than ruining the cake. Okay. Oh, Rochester, will you please take these Christmas tree lights and fix them? Fix them? Yes. I ain't fooling around with electricity. Now, what are you afraid of? I ain't going to get hit by nothing I can't hit back. <laughs> oh, Roger. Imagine being afraid of electricity. Suppose Robert Fulton was afraid of electricity. He never would have invented the electric light. <laughs> Woody. Jack, you're thinking of Thomas Edison. Edison? Well, then what did Robert Fulton do? He said, don't give up the ship. <laughs> that was John Paul Jones. Now, let's not start that again. Now, Rochester, please fix these lights, will you? Okay, okay. Let's see. Now, in electricity, there's the electrons and the electrodes. <laughs> then there's the positive and the negative. But I ain't positive which one is negative. <laughs> hmm. Then there's the atom. Now, the atoms are supposed to go from the positive to the negative. Or... Maybe they go from the electrons to the electrodes. <laughs> then again, maybe they go from Natchez to Mobile. Rochester. Now, as long as these atoms keep passing each other, everything is all right. Yeah. But when they meet halfway and start fighting, they're going to turn on anybody who tries to butt in. Rochester, I'm not interested in the scientific details. I just want you to fix those lights. And I promise you, while you're holding the wires, no one in this room will turn on the switch. I know, boss. While I'm holding the wire, you ain't going to turn on the switch. And Miss Livingston ain't going to turn on the switch. Of course not. But way up there, bowling down, there's a little man sitting in a room with thousands of wires around. <laughs> what? 
How do I know he ain't gonna do something just to break the monotony? <laughs> oh, all right, I'll fix it myself. Go back in the kitchen. Come in. I'm looking for Mr. Benny. Mr. Jack Benny. Me? Yes. But you're a policeman. Well, now, what do you know? This blue uniform has given me away again. But, uh... But, but, officer... Mary, say something. But, but, officer... Is that all you can say? That's all you said. <laughs> now, now, officer... Mr. Benny, I hate to be doing this to you on Christmas Eve, but I have a complaint about you disturbing the peace last week at Moore's department store. At Moore's department... Oh, that... Well, officer, that wasn't my fault at all. You see, first I had trouble with some crazy floor walker who kept hollering, stop breathing on my carnation. And then... A little sore, please. I'm writing it down. Yes, sir. How many R's in carnation? One. Then. And then some silly guy kept following me around, asking me what I thought I ought to buy his wife for Christmas. Now, I didn't mind it the first time or the second time, but he kept hounding me. And just before the real trouble started, I was standing by the perfume counter... When all of us... I was trying to buy some perfume for my sister, Florence. Here's your chain, sir. Thank you. Come on, Mary. Let's get over I there. I beg your pardon, mister. Oh, it's you again. What do you think I ought to buy my wife for Christmas? I told you before, I don't know what you should buy your wife for Christmas. Figure it out yourself. Figure it out yourself, he says. Figure it out yourself. Fine Christmas, spirit. Look, I don't care what you buy your wife for Christmas. Don't buy her anything. Don't buy her anything? We've been married for 12 years. What are you trying to do? Break us up? Look, I don't know your wife. I've never seen your wife. What's going on here? What's the trouble? That man's been caught stealing somebody's wife. What? At your age, you gray-haired wolf. <laughs> now, wait a minute. One time, let me through. What's going on here? What's going... Oh, it's you, my little choopy with the droopy soupy. Now, cut that out and don't blame me for this because it's... Stop breathing on my carnation. <laughs> I'll breathe on it as much as I like. <laughs> That. And this is all your fault, mister. Ask me to buy your wife for Christmas. For all I care, you can buy her a dog collar. What size? What size? There you are, folks. See what a crazy guy is, and you blame me. Why, it's not my fault. I'm not the type that would start trouble. I'm a peaceful home... Ah, shut up! <laughs> well, oh, come on, Mary. Let's get out of here. And that's... That's exactly what happened, officer. Believe me. By golly, it's amazing. It sounds like something you'd hear on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm convinced it wasn't your fault, and I'm going to forget all about this complaint and be wishing you folks a Merry Christmas. The same to you, officer. And a Happy New Year. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Say, Mary, he was a nice fellow at that. Yes, he? he was. Now, come on, Mary. Let's put the presents around the tree before the gang gets here. We got all the packages under the tree. It looks nice, doesn't it? It sure does. Jack, if you're not going to use the Christmas tree lights, let's put on the candy canes. Okay, here's the box, and you can... Hey, wait a minute. 
I had 12 candy canes, and now there are only 11. Where's the other one? Don't look at me. I'm not looking at you. I'm asking you. All right, I ate it. Here's 10 cents. <laughs> Smarty, I bet you'd be surprised if I took it. I wouldn't be surprised if you sued me. Mary, right, let's get this finished, will you? Jack, you better pick up those lights off off the floor before somebody steps on them. Oh, yes. Now, where can I put them? I'm going to put these lights up here on the chair, this chair right here. And, Mary, here's Rochester's present. I forgot that. Slip it under the tree. Boy, will he be surprised. But, Jack, how will he be surprised? You've got toilet water written all over the package. Well, you've got to do that with Rochester. When he opens a package and finds a bottle, he never stops to read the label. <laughs> Last year, I gave him a miniature ship and a bottle, and the mask stuck out of his mouth for three days. <laughs> Every time I asked him something, he had to answer me through the crow's nest. <laughs> Believe me, Mary, I, I know what I'm doing. Well, Jack, I guess that does it. Tree's all finished. Yeah. Gee, it looks swell. I'm kind of tired. I think I'll sit down for a minute and smoke a cigarette. Mary, have you got a match? No. Oh, well. Oh, say, boss! What is it, Rochester? Are your socks dry yet? My socks? I think so. Well, people will be here soon. You better take them off the tree. <laughs> oh, that's right. You take them off, will you, Rochester? I'm tired. I want to sit here a while. Yes, sir. Hey, this tree looks all nice, but it's kind of dark. Oh, no wonder the lights aren't plugged in. Uh, I'll fix that. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! Say. Well, what's the matter, Jack? I was sitting on the wire. <laughs> as long as you're here, Rochester, give me a match. You don't need it now. Your cigarette is lit. <laughs> oh, yes. Thanks, Rochester. Don't thank me. Thank that little man up at Boulder Dam. <laughs> Rochester. I wonder how that guy at Boulder Dam knew I was sitting. Oh, well. Uh... Come in. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Merry Christmas, everybody. Same to you, Phil. Hey, Jackson, that Christmas tree looks terrific. Yeah, it is a nice tree, isn't it? Not only that, it's grown about two feet since last year. <laughs> Phil, this isn't the same one. You know, Phil, I believe in the old-fashioned way of getting a tree. I know when you get up early in the morning and bundle yourself up warm, and you throw an axe over your shoulder and go out in the woods, you know, way out in the wilderness and... Chop down your own Christmas tree. Yeah, you're right, Jackson. Where'd you find this one? In the lobby of the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. <laughs> you said it. Timber! Yes, sir. Say, Jackson, you ought to see the tree I got in my house. I got it all decorated, and then right on top, I got a big red star. A red star? Phil's supposed to be a silver star. I know, but this way I get five red points. <laughs> oh, Harris, you humorous. You're the Mark Train of your generation. <laughs> Mark Twain, Phil, it's Twain. Twain. Wheelie? <laughs> Phil, after a gag like that, your lucky Santa doesn't scratch you with his claws. <laughs> say, say, that was pretty good, too. Don't bother sending us Cracker Jack, Mother. We're now getting corn by the ton. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, Mary. I thought that was pretty cute. Hey, Phil, what do you got in that package there? Oh, I forgot, Jackson. It's a Christmas present for you. For me? Yeah, me and the boys in the band all chipped in and got it for you. Well, thanks. Thanks. I'll put it under the tree. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Open it up right now. Okay. See, it was certainly nice of you and the boys to think of me. You know, I really didn't... Oh, Phil, thanks. Gee, a beautiful turtleneck sweater. Gee. Well, look inside of it, Jackson. Inside? Oh! Oh, Phil! What is it, Jack? A turtle. <laughs> Fine present. I'll fix him. Imagine bringing me a turtle for anything, Gary. Come here, Phil. Phil, sit down on my chair. Well, thanks, Jackson. Are you, uh, are you...